Your body makes sure that you eat by making you hungry. But chewing and swallowing is just the beginning of the digestive process, a fact you can become all too aware of sometimes. What is the most unusual thing you've eaten? It would definitely have to be sushi. Gator tail I ate it when I was in Florida. It just felt so weird going down. Octopus? Once I had escargot, it tastes a little squishy going down, but in the end it tastes mostly like chicken. In Texas one time, I ate cactus, and it was very slimy and disgusting. I was in Disney World once with my family, and I ordered escargot in a French restaurant, and it was the waiter said that you must be the only kid in Disney World to order that. When you take your first bite of food, a complex process called digestion begins. What is digestion? Digestion occurs when your body breaks food down so that nutrients can be absorbed. When you eat something, your front teeth cut large pieces of food into chewable portions, while the teeth at the back of your mouth grind it down even further. After a few moments of chewing, an order of fries or a delicious slice of pizza mixes with saliva. An enzyme in the saliva reacts chemically with the starches in the food to turn them into a mushy mass you wouldn't even recognize as food. The chewing process is the first step in the digestive process. It is called mechanical digestion. It only takes one swallow and the food that you've just eaten continues through a highly efficient machine known as the digestive system. The next stop is a long mucus-lined tube called the esophagus. Here, contractions of smooth muscle push food downward into the stomach. All of those contractions push the food through the esophagus and into the stomach, where another form of digestion takes place. Chemicals in saliva begin breaking down the carbohydrates in your food as soon as you put it in your mouth. Once food is inside your stomach, layers of muscle expand and contract, mixing your food with additional digestive fluids. This is called chemical digestion. These digestive fluids are produced in the stomach's lining. They begin the process of breaking down proteins in our food to even smaller particles that can be absorbed into the bloodstream. These stomach chemicals would digest the stomach itself if it were not lined with a thick layer of protective mucus. When everything has been churned to a consistence of soft cottage cheese, called chyme, the stomach starts expanding and contracting again, pushing tiny particles of partially digested food out of the stomach. The story doesn't end there. In order to be completely digested, food has to travel a distance of 19 feet, almost the length of a car, through the small intestine. How does the small intestine affect digestion? The first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, is an area where many digestive enzymes are added to it from the pancreas. These enzymes play the major role in the actual digestive process. Everything except some water and indigestible materials, such as fiber, are absorbed into the bloodstream from the small intestines. These indigestible materials and some water are moved through the small intestine and into the large intestine. The large intestine is the last stop food makes in its path through the digestive system. Waste matter, like fiber, collect in the large intestine until it is ready to be passed out or excreted through the anus. When waste matter is released, the body is free to digest any new material that comes through and start the whole process over again. Digestion isn't a simple thing. Sometimes it takes days to complete. But understanding how we digest the foods we love to eat helps us see how complex the human body is. Did you know some of the carbohydrates you eat are broken down into a sugar called glucose? But that's not the only kind of sugar there is. Fructose is a sweet tasting sugar found in fruit. Sucrose is the sugar we're used to putting in our food. And lactose is a sugar that is found in milk and dairy products. Some portions of our genetic heritage are not limited to how we look. Sometimes people are affected by harmful conditions that are passed from generation to generation.